What courses could you take an undergrad that would be helpful for actually running a law firm? I went to Wingate University in North Carolina. So I have with me here today some slides showing the undergraduate programs offered by Wingate University, go Bulldogs. And I'm sure these are common to a lot of other undergraduate places that you can study. So I'm just gonna kind of take them one by one. I'm gonna go through these and decide, hey, what would I do if I had it to do all over again? The slide I'm looking at now has a lot of sciencey things. Biology, uh, organic chemistry, but of the things that are here, I could see psychology being helpful, especially if you are wanting to run a firm to understand how to manage people, how to manage your clients, and how to interact with opposing parties. I think psychology is very helpful in litigation when you're trying to determine what will move a jury to decide in your favor. So psychology of these things probably would be what I would pick. Political science, a close second if I wanted to run a firm that had sort of any government representation, but psychology is what I pick on this one. All right, the next slide I have has marketing, which is what I picked. I would 100% do this again. Almost everything that I learned in my marketing degree, I was able to apply to running a firm. Maybe even, there's MBA is listed here, which would be a, a not an undergraduate thing, but I could see the value in that because you've got marketing management, all of those other things, kind of this is how you run a business. And whenever you're a lawyer, you're not taught Law school will not teach you how to run a law firm. You may have one class that you can take for a semester that says, if you wanna hang a shingle, and that's probably what they're gonna call it, if you wanna hang a shingle, here's some helpful things. Write a business plan. But what they don't tell you about is, uh, what do you do when two of your paralegals hate each other? And <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have that issue in my office that they tell me about. But what do you do if you have employees that don't get along, but they're both you know, good at their jobs? How do you make people be able to work together? How do you get people all headed in the same direction? How do you do goal setting and growth for your firm? You will not learn that in law school, unless law school has changed a lot since I was there. But these are things that you may be able to learn if you go get your MBA or if you have a marketing or management degree. Marketing uh, is a special interest and passion of mine, so that's still my top pick on this slide. All right, next. Hmm, this one's got criminal justice, I think, is an easy one to say here if that is the type of law you're interested in. Criminal justice would be a great major with a lot of courses that would apply. I also could see public health being helpful, but I would probably say accounting if you want to run your own firm. For a couple of reasons, one, you may be advising business clients and while I would not encourage, if you're not a tax lawyer, don't give tax advice, that's you know, my take on it. Um, but if you are an, a, have an accounting major and you have an understanding of how things work, I think that gives you the ability to talk meaningfully with your clients about how their legal decisions may affect the, their books. It also helps you understand your own books better. You can't just have your books all willy-nilly. You need to know what money is coming in, what money is coming going out. And then also, if you have a trust account, then you have to provide reconciliation reports to the bar. So you have to do that periodically. You have to keep that trust account in order. So if you are someone that's like, I don't do numbers, that's why I went to law school, then you should definitely, definitely get some sort of coursework or some sort of uh, teaching somebody to teach you how to look at your books even if you are lucky enough to start on day one with a bookkeeper you're going to need to know how to review their work to make sure that they're doing it appropriately i've heard the horror stories of oh i had my handy dandy bookkeeper i loved him or her to death but then they ran off with all the clients money or they ran off with all my money i was wondering why i wasn't making any money it's because the bookkeeper had taken it all and i didn't know what i was looking at in the pnl or the profit and loss or in the balance sheet so if you don't know what you're looking at for those key reports and how to see what's coming and going, then one, you could get taken advantage of by someone that's unsavory. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But you also are missing opportunities to see where to improve your business. So even if you are lucky enough to have a bookkeeper, know how to do that role. So accounting would be incredibly valuable to make sure that you understand the the backbone the financial backbone of your business and then finally last slide here um 
I'm seeing like chemistry, communication, educational leadership, English, extra science, finance. People will probably expect me to say finance here. I'm going to say English. I think one of the most important things you can do as an attorney is find a way to communicate the law clearly to your clients. And that is regardless of the type of law you do. I know real estate does not involve me being in court and writing briefs like it did whenever I was in litigation, but I still need to be able to sit at a closing table with the buyer, whether they be experienced or not, and find a way to help them understand what we're doing right then and there. And I think English is incredibly valued to help you learn how to communicate. So knowing your audience, being a good writer is very important, even if your practice is not writing heavy. That's my pick on this list. Again, I'd still go back. If I had it to do over again, I think I would still do marketing, but that's also because it's a special interest of mine, like I said. But if you want to run your own firm, there is nothing that says you have to be a pre-law major in undergrad to go to law school. If you know going into it that you want to run your own firm, think about the things that you need to know to run a business. Because whenever you have your own firm, you're not just a lawyer, you're a business owner too. I'd say go the non-traditional route, pick something that will help you run a business law school teach how to be a lawyer after you graduate from law school how hard is it to find time to learn new skills it is not easy it's not easy to find the time especially if you have entered into your practice um, if you're in a small firm i think it's probably more difficult than if you're in a large firm because my friends that went the large firm route said hey i kind of showed up and then partners started giving me work and if i was good at it i kept doing that work but i could go get work from other partners in different areas or within my larger practice group so they were getting the on the job training of learning new areas but let's say you're like me you're a real estate attorney and you decide one day I want to also learn how to do estate planning. Well, there's no partner there to teach you this is how you do estate planning. You're going to have to devote a lot of time to getting competent in that area of law so that you can serve clients. Well, when are you doing that if you're doing your legal work all day? So that means you're gonna have to cut into your nights, your weekends, or cut back on serving existing clients, take less clients so that you can get up to speed. It's not easy to do, um, but it's not impossible. You just need to know that you're gonna have to make some sacrifices somewhere to be able to get up to speed. All right, so if you wanna be a lawyer someday who runs your own firm, I hope this was helpful. I gave you a little bit of my own experience, but hopefully you picked up some things that can help you decide your career path. I'm Tiffany Weber. I'm a real estate attorney in Mooresville, North Carolina. I love putting out videos about real estate law, what it's like being a lawyer. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.